Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Matt Johnson. We are back again with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. Thank you so much for joining us. For While we wait for people to join us live, I just want to speak to anyone that's watching this replay right on here on YouTube. Go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, that will make sure that you get the future episodes of our show as well as other fantastic real estate coaching content that you get from all over uh, the YouTube uh, universe basically and all the other coaches that are putting some great stuff out there so we're going to talk about how to hit the ground running how to uh, you know be aggressive and prospect as a new agent and we've got a very special guest but before we get that let me bring in the man of the hour the junior the junior grandmaster himself in the co-pilot seat as always Greg McDaniel what is up Matt holy shit dude today has been a day from fucking hell I've been running around all over the place where we have had clients that drug their feet earlier this morning on a final walkthrough it took me an hour and a half to do a freaking walk through. They, they measured every square inch of that house. Then I ran over to another city where I walked through a house from hell. I swear to God, they have like a, a Silence of the Lambs room in the basement of their property. There's spider webs everywhere. The property is completely falling down. My client almost wanted to buy it. Then we went and saw another property that she didn't like. Ran up to one of our properties that we're going to be closing on, who's been a nightmare from hell. We walk in to let an electrician in, electrician in because the lights weren't working. I walked in and found a massive puddle in the middle of the kitchen where there is no refrigerator. It's because the upstairs uh, sink had been leaking, leaked through the ceiling and into the lights and then onto the floor. So we couldn't get the lights fixed. The plumber went out and tried to shut the water off. We've re-damaged re -re -damaged the master bathroom area. <sighs> Came back here. We have people, two clients that are going for doing demand to close. It's fuck you very much, Trid. You've just you know foobarred us on these things. We have angry you know people pissed off at everything, and then I get to come on and hang out with you. So now, to, right now, my day is good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> this will be very cathartic for you, then, Greg. Oh my God, I need therapy. Well, I don't <laughs> need therapy. I need to give. I need get therapy. Well, I don't, that. I don't really need therapy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, let me give you a chance to uh, to vent and get some things off your off your chest and answer some uh, some questions from the Facebook Lead Gen Scripts and Objections group. Ooh, fantastic! You know I love okay. doing that. Yes. Yeah. All right. So first up, um, let's talk about a fun one. So this comes from our friend Rex Jarnigan out in Colorado. Uh, he's actually come through Jeff Cohen's workshops and stuff like that. So we like Rex a lot. Um, he's building a team out there that's going to be really good. So Rex says, uh, need some fresh uh, handlers for this. Quote, we want you here for every showing. We don't want strange agents in our house. And he clarifies, it's a tenant that doesn't want a lockbox and wants me there for every showing, and it's a condo. So, Greg, how would you respond? Uh, drop the client immediately. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, what I would do with that is, you know what, you have got to go into that eyes open. Uh, if you know that that's going to be a, a part of the uh, condition of getting the listing, then you have to be willing to show up there. I know a number of clients, a, uh, an agent out of, out of our Walnut Creek office uh, had to do that multiple times. We've had to do that on a couple of our high-end properties. And when I say high-end, I'm talking like $5 million type of high-end, not a 199 condo. Uh, yeah. But every every market's a little bit different. But if you're newer in the business and this is your first listing or you know your next paycheck, I mean, what else you got to do? Why don't you go out and door knock the neighborhood? Why don't, if you got some other time to kill and you're going to be out in the neighborhood, keep telling people, yeah, hey Bob, just yeah, we just had another show and yeah, Sue, we just had another show and if you meet people in the neighborhoods, you know, put flyers on people's doors, you know, keep them up to date to the well, you don't really want to annoy them, but you want to let them know what you're doing. I mean, if you're going to be there, why the heck not, right? So it's just. Just go into it eyes open, and if it's juice is worth the squeeze, squeeze the juice. Yeah, be right. open. fair enough. Uh, so uh, before we get into uh, some of your shout outs, I want to just mention. So we're going to talk about uh, you know how to hit the ground running and be aggressive as a new agent. You mentioned that, Greg. If you got the time, might as well do it. We're going to talk mm -hmm. with uh, agent Justin Moy about that. Justin, what's up today? I'm doing good. Man. How are you doing? We are awesome. So we're excited to have you on. We're going to talk about what you've been doing to uh, to get started as a new agent, kind of what you're doing for prospecting and how you structure your day and all kinds of things like that. So, um, And for anybody that's listening, if you prefer the uh, the audio version nestled right here in your earbuds, head on over to iTunes or Stitcher and subscribe there. Uh, and as always, subscribe here on YouTube if you like the video version. But uh, Greg, you want to uh, give some shout-outs to some people that you've spoken to over the past few days? Yeah, man, absolutely. I had two phenomenal conversations this week. Um, so today's day, day is Wednesday. So Monday, uh, Tyler and I talked, and super cool dude, man. He's a sheriff. 
Uh, he's been uh, worked for the federal, you know, you know, government uh, protecting both, both people. Uh, I believe he worked in the jail system as well, and he also, you know, helped do uh, building security, not like a rent a cop, but like you know, helped to secure a facility. Um, so we worked together and had an opportunity to really kind of how, help him understand how to leverage that protective knowledge, so he can. We're going to help him start doing workshops and you know, showing people how to protect their homes, protect themselves, uh, how, to, uh, how to protect their families. Um, there's not too many real estate agents walking around out there that know how to disarm someone with a pencil. So, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Someone that's armed with a pencil or disarming someone with a gun using only a pencil? I like the second scenario. Much cool. Okay. Much cool. okay. <laughs> Very James Bond. <laughs> um, and then uh, last night, uh, uh, David and I um, had a, a great opportunity to talk for about an hour and a half. Had so much fun talking to him. Um, he's in Denver, Colorado. I was born in Boulder, so he and I had a lot to bond there. But um, great guy. I think he's going to do really well. We came up with some really good ideas for some outdoor activities and some other things that he's into uh, that I think are going to give him a leg up to get him back in the business and really starting to kick ass and take names. So, gentlemen, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your time. You have no idea how much it makes me happy to get on the line and, and, and to help you guys um, uh, achieve or get over that hurdle, that question, that stopping block, that thing that's in your way. It really, it honestly makes my day to talk to people. So, you guys, quit making me spend my nights alone. <laughs> Get on, get on the get get a hold of me. Nine two five nine one five nineteen seventy eight nine twenty five nine fifteen nineteen seventy eight is the McDaniel Challenge. Six p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Monday through Friday. I reserve the time to talk to you guys, one person every night, so I can help you guys do private coaching and work through that issue. So don't, don't make me spend my night alone. Get on the horn. Let's let's set this up. <laughs> That's right. So, all right. The and the quick, giggles uh, begin. Quick shout out to our, our lovely and talented sponsors. Number one, our marketing. Just want to thank them for writing a check of cold hard cash to uh, to help me hang out some podcasts like these happen. Check them out at getviral.com. And then Equity, if you're looking to generate online buyer leads, uh, it is a platform built from the ground up specifically for solo agents. It's the perfect number of leads. It's super affordable. Pairs you up with a lender that will pay half the cost and uh, perfectly sets you up to generate uh, online buyer leads in the right number that you can work consistently over time and close uh, <clears throat> close deals. <clears throat> and so before we get into the rest of the stuff, we just want to mention that we would love to do uh, live appearances, you know, Real Estate Uncensored Live. So if that's something that you're interested in, having us come in and talk about high-tech, high-touch prospecting in your office or any of the other topics that we talk about here on the show, just let us know. Take the McDaniel Challenge, get hold of Greg, and then run it up the flag to your broker or your team leader, whatever the case is, whoever needs to approve that in your office and connect those two people so that we can talk about coming and speaking in your office because we love to do that. And then if you check out uh, McDanielRealEstateSystems.com, uh, just go to the 5 Minutes to Farming link. and We've got our whole training video series there on real estate farming. So, all right. With that said, what Dude, do you say what we a, get into? What uh, about our goals, bro? Our, we have our goals. goals for our Facebook. Yes. For our, Facebook, for our Facebook, YouTube. For YouTube. So, yeah. YouTube. So, we are closing in on 650 subscribers on YouTube. We'd like no, to no, get... no, 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 no. We're 652, player. 652, 652 oh, as of right now. In the last five seconds. I'm sorry. <laughs> We want to get over 750 by the end of January. It looks like we're going to hit it even closer than that, but only if you guys go on and subscribe to YouTube and tell a friend in the business about the show. So yeah. that's the that's what we really appreciate is just go out there and tell people, tell your fellow agents to listen, encourage them, send, you know, send them a link to one of our YouTube videos, turn them on to the show. Uh, a lot of people are finding us and stumbling onto us accidentally on YouTube through other coaches and through other podcasts like Toby's Super Agents Live and whatever the case is, uh, and then going back and binge watching like all of our past episodes. <laughs> Who wouldn't? So sometimes all it takes is just sending somebody a link to the to the YouTube video or YouTube channel, and then you've just created a new fan, which we really appreciate. Yeah, and if you guys are thinking about dating someone, I mean, to really <laughs> seal the deal with a guy or gal, send them a link to our show. You know what? That's gonna show love. That really that really means that 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 that's a caring spirit. I don't even know how to respond to that, so I'm gonna move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, let's get to the content, Matt. Quit screwing around over there. Yeah, My exactly. goodness. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. So, Justin, what is up? Not much, man. I'm just here. Uh, got one other appointment after we get out of here, but keeping busy. And as always, always uh, happy to do some speaking and help anybody out in the business that I can, especially being a little younger guy. Um, so I heard that's what you guys are doing, so mm -hmm. ask if I could be on board with that. Yeah, absolutely. So, so give us an idea. Like, When did you get into the business? How long have you been doing it? Uh, about one calendar year now. 
Um, not even really. I, I, I actually got my license uh, in December of last year. Uh, it's December now, so almost exactly one year. And I didn't get into the business until about April. Um, I ended up getting laid off from the job that I was working at. I originally was going to save up some more money before I got in the business, but got laid off and decided, well, I guess it's now or never. And so a little under a year now, I've been kind of full-time really going after it. Gotcha. And what's uh, so fill us in kind of on what well, we'll talk about kind of the process of how you got here, but what is your business and what does your day look like right now? Uh, right now, I, I try to keep things as simple as I can. Um, prospecting is typically it used to be the hardest part of the day, and now it's just kind of something that I do. Um, so right now, my daily schedule typically goes at eight. I start my work day uh, eight a.m. and from eight a.m. to eight thirty. Uh, I do mostly phone prospecting, so that's how I like to do it. Um, so from 8 to 8.30, I typically spend that time deciding who I'm going to call. If I'm going to call Just Listed, or if I'm going to call My Sphere, or if I'm going to call Fizbo's Expired, whatever I feel like that day. I don't think it's too important to call the same person every day, every week, just as long as you get it done. Um, and then from 8.30 to 10.30, I... I just call. If I'm using a Mojo or a dialer, I'll, I'll queue that up. If I'm doing hand calls to the Sphere, I'll, I'll put my headset on and I'll just go after it there. Um, but that, that's kind of how I try to structure it. And anything past 11.30 is just kind of my time to do whatever I need to do. If I need to handle some outbound marketing or if I'm having uh, lunch with the, my Sphere, if I'm getting coffee with some people, or if I'm uh, marketing a listing, cold calling for that. Uh, it's kind of a little less structured in the afternoons. Uh, that actually brings up a good point, uh, Justin, is that, you know, w by the way, guys, when he says he's doing mojo calls, he's an absolute animal on the on the line. I've heard him. He does a phenomenal job. And <laughs> he has some of the funniest comebacks to people's smart-ass response to him. That I, That's why I want Justin on. He's got, he's got a quick wit like you wouldn't believe, you guys, um, and a hell of a hard worker. So... <laughs> Um, that's why I want to kind of talk about the high tech and high touch side, right? So the high tech is going to be Facebook, uh, the Mojo, and everything else. But you also just mentioned that you're going out with your sphere and having lunch or coffees. Now, are are do you have a schedule um, that you go out and have lunches and coffees with them, or is it something that you just kind of do when you feel like it? Uh, it kind of depends on on like now it's it's kind of towards the holidays, so it's a little fewer and further between as people are going out of town and stuff. But I try to. Uh, whether it's coffee or lunch, try to go out with somebody at least two times a week. Um, How, how's that working out for you? Compare that for me right now. Compare that the you know, the coffee lunches, and I didn't mean to cut you off. My my apologies. No, uh, the coffee and lunches to uh, the, the the Mojo and Facebook and the digital side. Uh, compare and contrast that for me, given that you're a millennial. I'd love to. I think a lot of people would like to hear that. Sure. So, I mean, when I when I do like the coffee meetings, usually it's like somebody who's in my sphere. So, if it's somebody I'm mojo dialing, um, that could just be a numbers game for me. I'm just it's like it's, you said, it's the high tech. You're just trying to blare through them. I got three lines dialing. If you're not interested, I got to go on to the next goodbye. Mm -hmm. um, the coffee and the sphere calls, on the other hand, I try to do the opposite. I try to spend as much time as I can with that person. Um, whether I'm on the phone with them or whether I'm sitting down in front of them eating or having coffee. Um, I, and I just try to usually just shoot the shit, for lack of a better term, talk about anything. And it'll always come back to work. You know, mm -hmm. Oh, are you still working at that company? Oh, how's that going for you? And then naturally they'll just ask me, what about you? Are you still selling in insurance or what were you doing again? <laughs> uh, close, you know, I'm selling real estate. And then it's, it's something that you I, I bring up kind of passively. Um, especially because my friends are so young, they're not buying anything out in California for the next. They're still in college. Most next thirty of them. So, or forty years, or yeah. Years to buy. So yeah, I got a lot of farming to do for them. But um, but that's kind of how I do it. If if I don't know you and it's a cold call, I'm probably just trying to qualify you and, and go to the next one. Um, if you're my sphere, I'm I'm trying to spend as much time as I can with you, just building that connection. Okay, good. And, and I'm assuming you're closing, you're asking for the business every time you're either on the phone or you're with the sphere of influence. I'm curious because a lot of people don't don't do not do this, and I'm just curious you do. Since you are a prodigy of my training, <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, are, you, are you asking for additional business from other sources like, okay, hey, hey, Matt, great to get time with you, man. Love grabbing you, buy a cup of coffee. And as you guys all know, Matt is a coffee addict. Uh, he has more <laughs> coffee going through his through his veins than there it is right there double espresso. 
<laughs> By the way, guys, if you ever want to give Matt a gift, just give him a case of a double espresso shots from Starbucks. He will be life indebted to you. He'll be it will be like a, a life bond. Like if he's <laughs> you saved his life. <laughs> I'll be I'll be morally obligated to follow you on various adventures and carry a large sword. <laughs> I I am, I owe you my life. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I lost my train of thought. Yeah. Okay. So uh, ask. Yeah. So that's a good question, though, Justin. Like when you're meeting with your sphere. So one of the things that when we when we interviewed Jeff Cohn, uh, the thing that I love about him is like when he was working his sphere as a young agent, uh, he's very smart. So he didn't just meet with them, and, and he didn't even just ask them to refer business to him, right? So he would actually train them on how to refer business to him. He would give them a couple cards, <laughs> and he'd give them like a little script. And he would tell them, you know, here's who I'm looking for. Like, here's who I'm really good at working with. Like, he was going after sellers. So he would tell people, hey, if you run across somebody that's, that fits this description, don't just hand them my card. Get back to me and tell me who they are and give me their contact info, and I will take it from there. I will follow up, and I'll make the connection. So what, what's your approach to actually ending the interaction and kind of getting business out of your sphere? Right, yeah. So so part of what I do is I, I will ask for business, but I won't do it every single time depending on how much I hang out with them. I don't want to be just be known as a guy like, ah, don't invite Justin, that asshole. All he's going to do is just ask people for business. <laughs> so I, I try to walk a fine line with it, but at the end of the day, I do need to ask for their business. Um, and usually I'll, I'll try to narrow it down because when you – I think Greg was – talked about this and then when I first got into business he's saying um, you know the typical line like oh do you know anybody who's buying or selling in the next 15 years you know probably I probably <laughs> do but I'm not really gonna put an effort into it right now so I do try to narrow it down for the future so I'll go uh, you know do you, do, you, do you hear anybody in your office maybe at your job that's maybe thinking about moving and when I narrow it down that seems to have a lot better of an effect because mm -hmm. even if you know I just because I didn't ask them if their mom is moving doesn't mean they're going to say, well, Justin didn't ask my mom was moving. He only asked if my coworkers were moving. Yeah, so I, I try to narrow it down. Unconscious, like the barrier of, oh, I don't know anybody. Right, and yeah. And think about something specific, and then from there, there you can kind of like free associate. Your mind will start bringing up other people. Right, so, exactly. So there's, there's something actually I just, I just came up with, and I think that might work well for you, Justin, given a comment you made earlier in this show in regards to the fact you got laid off, right? So right. instead of asking any, you know, people that you're around, you know, hey, who do you know is buying or selling? You know, ask them, hey, who, who, who do you know that got pregnant or was having, a, who was having their first kid? They're probably going to need to buy something. Hey, gosh, right. <laughs> do, you, do you know if anyone uh, do you know if anyone got laid off, any of our friends got laid off? Might be needing to sell a home. So you reach out to them anonymously and <laughs> you, um, <laughs> hey, we should grab coffee. I'll buy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's a good that's a good point. Asking about life events, and that was big when it was wedding season, kind of in the summer. Um, I didn't know there was such thing as a wedding planners networking association. There is. Uh, so it's not called that. It's called something something French. I don't know what it's called, but it's called, uh, it's a wedding planner that stuff. I met. Yeah, it's like it's like Bella Honda network. It's something. It's something like that. But I met a wedding planner, and she. I told her, you know, I'm looking to break into the kind of newly married and maybe divorced market, you know, do you have anybody? And she goes, oh, yeah, come to the, the wedding planners networking. And it's, you know, photographers and bakers and florists and stuff. But um, targeting those life events is something that's important to me as well. You just hit something so square in the head. I mean, have you, dude, go meet every single wedding planner. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Every single email address you possibly can. Oh, my God. Yep. Oh, my God. I mean, oh, oh, congratulate, congratulations on your nuptials. I'm very happy for the young couple. Have you been pre-approved, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that you just spent ten grand on a wedding, how about twenty grand on a down payment? What do you yeah. got? <laughs> Let's look forward so, to your yeah. true future, your financial future. Yes, I mean, yes. Let's just say maybe, there may be some farming and some long-term follow-up required, but that's all right. Yeah, so that brings up a good question, Justin. I mean, what's what kind of uh, what kind of client do you, would you like to work with, or are you currently working with? Are you focusing on the home, like first-time home buyers because they're in your age group? Or are you going after older sellers, what are you doing? Um, my original thought when I got into the business was, yeah, I'll do the first-time home buyer thing because um, they're going to be a little bit younger. Uh, and then I got my first-time home buyer, and I was like, wow, this is extraordinarily difficult. <laughs> and, and not that I'm not willing to go through it. Now, but are we just talking about sustain. like on the on the program side, the loan side, or are we talking about on the client side, difficult? Um. More or less on the client side, difficult, just because they, they don't quite know what they want. They get scared really easily. 
Uh, I usually end up dealing with parents, which is fine. All this stuff is fine, but to me, it just wasn't something that I wanted, you know, 80% of my business to come out of. Um, and so, you know, the old saying is you got to list to last. And so I decided, well, I got to gear this more towards uh, listings. And then, you know, the thought was maybe little younger couples will be in the condos and I'll list those. Uh, and then, you know, when that was my goal originally, and then I started calling on for sale by owners and expired, I was doing anything I could anything I could, anything that was free because I was broke, I was flat broke at this point. Um, oh. I was actually so broke when I did my coffee meetings. This is this is a good tip if you're cheap or if you just don't have money, <laughs> <laughs> which I was both when I first started because I didn't have money. I had to be cheap. Um, I would go to coffee meetings almost every day, like two or three a day, just trying to reestablish myself with my sphere. And I, would, I bought a Starbucks cup, like a reusable cup, and I just filled it with water and I got there earlier than them, and I said, oh, I already got mine, you know, do you want something? So, so it saved me like five bucks every single day. So, <laughs> you can't blame it. Um, that's awesome. So, <laughs> I was in a pinch, wow. man, that's like five bucks for coffee three times a day, that's 15 bucks a day, I did the math, I'm not doing that, I haven't closed any <laughs> deals yet. So, um, <laughs> I'm, not ingest- I'm not investing in my digestive tract. Oh, yeah, no. I don't even like coffee, you know, it's a, <laughs> so. It's um, a necessary evil. <laughs> So, so back to kind of what who I was targeting is, uh, I started getting into Fizbo's and and my very first listing, uh, it was a Fizbo and it was a little older couple. She was maybe, I hope she doesn't ever see this, maybe late forties, um, and it just went great. Greg, and she, she, Greg just had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> An older couple, you know, early 40s. What the fuck? Right. Dude, I'm turning 37 tomorrow. Well, <laughs> talk about millennials here, man. So, <laughs> older so couple was compared awesome. to me, compared to me, you know, and it was somebody who I didn't think I would work well with because they, I thought they would look down on me. I thought they'd be like, who the hell is this young kid? You know, what does he know? Um, and it was kind of the complete opposite. They they were fine working with me. Uh, you got to know your stuff up front. You got to know your numbers and your statistics. People really love statistics. Um, and they did not once question my age. And after that, I decided, you know, this is a market that I can hit. You know, I don't necessarily need to only work with first-time home buyers. You just need to be confident and, and really know your stuff um, yeah. just to combat the young look. Yeah, you do, and that 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 is your antidote, you know, to to people that may be repeat buyers, investment buyers, first time buyers that are older than you, generation, you know, age wise. But if you come in there and just own the the you know, own the presence, you dominate the the room that you're in because you can spout off the stats. Well, we've actually climbed, you know, four point two percent from the beginning of last year. Where our inventory is down eleven point six percent. You know, our foreclosures have dropped seven point two percent, but we're anticipating an eleven, you know, a nine point six eight two one 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 nine percent growth in next year in next year's housing market. You know, based upon the Fed stats. Bleh, I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, I, th- I I feel like I sound I sound like a, an ingenious in- individual, and I made every one of those stats up. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> don't make the stats up. Try to get good stats, no. you know, right? Yeah. But but um, and one thing that I started doing that that does help me out being younger, um, is that I started keeping my own stats. Now, when I got the listings, uh, it was listed at a certain price point, and it sold above. And I calculated the percentages, and I have an Excel spreadsheet that I put everything into, and I found out. It was my first listing, right? But for my listings for that year, I'm selling listings at 104% when the average Ooh. listing sells for 102%. Why? And then uh, so I kind of piggybacked off of that. Nice. That's awesome. Tell me you're putting, doing mailers on that and doing door knocking on that. <laughs> oh, of course. I pray, you know, this year so far, 104% one listing, but they don't know. That. <laughs> <laughs> it's listing. true, though. It's true. It, and, and then, oh. you know, I got, a, I got another listing, and that one sold way above. So now it's 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 much higher. It's like 107 percent, which sounds unrealistic. So I don't. No, it doesn't. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's exactly what it is. Yeah, like, with like average average days on market, like, boxers just shouting that from the rooftop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my average days. day on market is like four. You know, it's like oh, okay, wow, and and um, so. <laughs> Justin, yeah, but Justin, there, there is something very key there, which is keeping track of thing, things like that in an Excel spreadsheet. That's something that that Jeff Cohn did as well, and then Greg, your dad has that t- ridiculous tracking spreadsheet. 
Um, I mean, that's that's what some of the best guys do. Help. That's where Pipeline Wizard came from. Is yeah. Jesse Garcia key, keeping track of everything he did in Excel spreadsheet? I mean, it's, there's there's a lot of um, it's a very very good idea, and that's there's no other way to really track stuff. And when you come in like as a young agent to a listing presentation, and you actually know not just numbers, but you know your numbers, that gives the impression that there's you know whether or not it's two listings or five listings or ten listings, at least gives the impression that there's some movement and you're consistently selling. Yeah, right. And, and Justin, and Justin, never, ever, ever. If I, I swear to God, dude, I'll smack the back of your head next time I see you, if if you're not if you're not touting that from everything, because like I've always said on this show, you know, people only know what you tell them. Dude, does it really matter if you still only sold two homes, or does it matter that you sold it for a hundred and seven percent of the listing price? Okay, the, a, a seller only gives a shit if you sell the home for at or above the listing price. Look, you could be an infant in swaddling clothes. You know, and if you can sell their, <laughs> sell their house for 107 percent, they're gonna probably hire you. <laughs> Minus the dirty diapers and everything, but <laughs> right, right, exactly. And so, you know, those those have been important. For, those have pulled through, and and those have directly gotten me my next listing as well. Um, and you know, you see people's reaction when you say numbers like that, because I don't think a lot of agents are really doing that, and that's kind of their fault. They're they're only harming themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, when I tell them that what my stats are compared to the average, it, 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 I almost try to make it seem like it's a no-brainer. And mm -hmm. then I just kind of assumptively close things. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What, uh, is there anything else? Can you tell us a little bit more about the spreadsheet? Is there anything else that you're tracking in there just besides general you know, sale price to list price? Um, well, I have two tabs on my spreadsheet. I have one for listing and one for buyers. So the listings, it's uh, percentages of list price to sale price um, and days on market. Sure. I mean, aside from that, I don't know what else I would track. And then the buy side, um, I do as a percentage of list price. So right now, my buyers are buying property at 98% of a list price when the average sale occurs at 102%. So work with me, and I'm saving you 4% on average. Um, and out here in this market, that's about $30,000 or $40,000 of an average home price. So uh, that's how I do it on the, the buy side, and I track that after – you know the list price, and then we close. And if there's any um, seller credits that they're giving, I subtract that. Or if we have any, uh, so you know they're closing at 98%. Um, and then also I track off-market opportunities. So part of another way I separate myself because I do have to do that uphill battle for being so young is, uh, you know, I say a lot of realtors are going to put you on the automatic drip and they're going to forget it. Um, for me, I do leverage that because I have to. I have to leverage technology. But I also look for off-market opportunities for you as well. Uh, this year, I've, pr I've produced up to 33 off-market opportunities for my clients so far, and a couple of those have, have closed. So um, those are homes that you wouldn't have gotten with another realtor. So that's I track those as well. Yeah, That's, that's huge. huge. That's awesome. God, we spend too much time together. We, we do. That's a problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that, that is awesome. That's a great, great competitive advantage to tout. Um, I mean, and the way you phrased it is very good. You know, just as far as I've presented X number of opportunities have mm -hmm. come up, and then a couple of them have closed. You know, I mean, that's that's an excellent way of putting that. It's not just, well, I sold a couple of properties from the off market. You know, no, I've, I've actually tracking the opportunities is fantastic. Also, right. Justin, what you should do on your on your listing side, just so that you know and you can either you know tweak it one way or the other, is the number of showings while the property was active. So, yeah. like, if you if you had, yeah. you know, because everyone's like, well, I want to expose it out to the whole market, and uh, how, how many showings do you do usually get? I mean, you can say that. Say, well, you know, Matt and Linda and your three twelve pound babies. I think it's Julie. <laughs> Yeah, Linda sounds like I'm married think, an old person, person, like a forty-year-old. Yeah, like an like old person. <laughs> <laughs> That's twice can, my age, man. <laughs> oh my god, we're ending the podcast now. <laughs> oh my god. So, um, but no, if you say Matt, Linda, three twelve-pound babies, um, you know, uh, I sell my homes for a hundred and seven percent on average in 2015 uh, above the listing price. Here are the comps. You lay it out so they know that you're not under underpricing the home and just, just touting a number off of because you price it for a buck and you sell it for, you know, two yeah. bucks. Well, there you go. <laughs> you just went through the roof. Um, <laughs> but but then you say on average my properties because of what I do and how I market the home gets X amount of showings before we go into contract, mm -hmm. and people are just like, wait, you get like 15 showings in four days. 
That's a crap ton of prop, you know active buyers. We could get maybe multiple offers. Honey, that I'm so literally could hired that him. number could suck, by the way. But just the fact that you know that number puts you ahead of most right. agents because they right. could not tell you for the life of them what how many showings they got because they genuinely don't know, and that's they because know. they don't know exactly. Um, and, but if it does suck, Matt and Justin, they give you know where to fix something. There, there's a problem, you know what to fix. Maybe I'm not staging. Maybe I'm not doing enough something or other. But if you're not getting the showings, you're not getting the, the sales. So now you've identified a potential issue. And you can plug that hole and then you know let it let it flow from there. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you, Justin. Speaking of that, in terms of like generating showings, because you mentioned that you're you'll do a circle prospecting around one of your listings, right? So yes. do you have a particular goal, right? Is your goal to touch 50, 100, 200? Is it a, is it the number of hours that you'll spend dialing around uh, around a specific listing? Do you have any goals like that? Uh, I wouldn't put it so much on a quantity thing. I I kind of do it based on my time. Um, you know, I'll probably spend maybe two hours every afternoon doing it. Maybe Monday through Friday. Uh, however many people I get through then is the number that people that I get through. Uh, you know, realistically, I can't just spend eight hours a day doing that, just cold calling people. Um, and then I do typically do, I'll try to do a neighborhood. So with Mojo, it's great because you can map it out. Um, so if there's a specific neighborhood, uh, I'll map out the neighborhood so I kind of really get the neighbors on that because then they'll get my my flyer, my just listed flyer. They'll get our open house invitation. They'll get our my phone call. Then I'll, I'll door knock them for the open house. And so... Um, I try to layer it on top of each other. Uh, so I don't really have a, a numeric goal. I just kind of have a, a time block, you know, from one to four. Um, I'm cold, cold calling for this listing. And if I run out of numbers, I'll just pick a bigger area. Yeah. <laughs> does, does that go into your listing presentation, though? Do, I mean, the sellers know to expect that? Yes. Yeah, so I do tell them, um, you know, T you can also tell your neighbors I'll probably be giving them a phone call, mailing them, dropping some flowers on their door, or possibly knocking on their door depending on the day or whatever it is. Uh, and I'll say, you know, that's part of what we do is on average we're making uh, 800 cold calls for the property and we're mailing out X amount of flyers and we're knocking on X amount of doors. And so, uh, you know, we put a sweat equity to it too, especially with the FISBO market because the FISBO market, they're thinking you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. So you got to be able to say, no, this is what I do. This is the amount of money I spend. This is strategically how I spend the money. You know, you have to, you have to prove your value essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I mean, we talked about that, Greg, on the last podcast, right? I mean, if you're a new agent and you're going to claim that your advantage over a more established agent is that you have more time, mm -hmm. then you should be able to articulate what you're going to do at that time. And if you can't, it's probably because you're not doing anything differently than any other agent would do, which is to list it and then forget about it. Right, but also Justin, you're your perfect client for the perfect client, perfect agent for this discussion because I mean you got you're, you're my guinea pig pal, um, <laughs> but you you have uh, you got some excess time. Um, that's a, a fact of the matter, you know. At times, not maybe not today or whatever else, but I mean, you should if you're tracking everything else, track what you're doing on a daily basis. You know, you need to understand what you could be doing because if you're not if you're if you have nothing to do and you're not prospecting, why not? You know, exactly. it just goes, it goes to your bottom line. And if you don't want to do doors, do calls. If you don't want to do calls, do follow up some FISBOs. You know, but if you're going to go see a FISBO, go get the National Association uh, numbers on how much money you can save a homeowner as a FISBO when they're trying to sell their home and the value that you bring. And Matt and I talked about literally line iteming, line iteming, line iteming, just put, make it a freaking list. <laughs> make it a list. All, yeah. the stuff that you, the, all the stuff that you do. Um, I try to sound yeah. intelligent every once in a while. It just utterly <laughs> fails. <laughs> yeah, day. yeah, and that's important. And again, with the FISBOs, those stats are big too. Um, you know, National Association of Realtors finds that you will net after commission 17% more uh, than when you when you list a home with a professional realtor. Um, and I only charge 15%, so that's 2% more. <laughs> <you know>? so, <laughs> so, so that's a that's a caveat. Um, and then just kind of knowing, you know, how how your marketing is better than theirs, how you actively market and know how to target buyers and your connections. And you know, we had an office meeting this morning, and um, somebody mentioned an off-market plot of land, and I called one of my developers, and we're probably going to go see it. Wait, and they that's did. Something they did, but I'm not going to tell you about it because you got buyers too. Um, <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, talking to Dennis. I'm like, wait a minute. minute. <laughs> and, and so, kind of telling them that that network is is uh, valuable as well. Um, just prove value. Tell them how you're going to how they're going to net that 17% more even after commission, uh, and they're not going to do a lick of work. 
that's my job is to do all the work as well. Yeah, and you're connected to the MLS. I mean, you do this as a living. You understand the contract pitfalls and what not to do. You know what TRID is. By the way, FU TRID. Um, yeah. And you know how, how to get around it, who's a good lender, who's not, who's a stager, who's a mover, who's a packer, who does all of the, who's a house cleaner, who does all of this stuff. They don't have to do it because you have to also show them both what your values are, but what is their, what's their dollar productivity value for their job. Right, in our markets, if you're selling a million dollar home, they're not serving you know burgers at McDonald's. I mean, they might own a couple of McDonald's, but they don't right. aren't <laughs> serving at them. Um, <laughs> but if if you if you if you can identify that your all the value you bring, and then say, look, you know, Matt, I'm gonna allow, I want you to concentrate on your business because you need to buy next house through me, of course. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, it, it, let them go focus on that because they're not gonna understand how. How much time it takes and what it does to run a to run a real estate deal, a team, a company, you know, whatever. So, I think right. you're onto something, man. I think that that with the Fizbos, uh, I think it's a big market for you, um, a trick for you. Uh, go back if you want to do expireds, even more pain. Um, you can go and <laughs> go to Red X and go get uh, the uh, like I've talked about several times. Go get the um, expires right. that are six months or older. Yeah, the old right. expireds. The yeah. oldest buyers. They're like wine, man. They, they're, 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 the older they get, the better they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. And then it's something that, um, you know, going back to being a new agent, it was my first listing was the Fizzle because, again, it was it was free to find. They want mm -hmm. you to find them. So you go on Zillow, you go on ForSaleByOwner.com, whatever it is. You know, and if I can't find them, I'll shoot them an email. I'll say, hey, I couldn't find you. What, what's your phone number? You know, because so, sometimes they don't put their number on there because they know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call the hell out of them. So it's like um, a dating site for houses. You know, all the girls on dating site. sites want you to find them. So it's kind yeah. of like that for Get houses. Get that low hanging fruit, man. Get that low hanging fruit. <laughs> Matt's just shaking his head, going, "I can't believe it's not there." <laughs> oh, good lord! I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> it's twice today. I, I've, I've outsmarted you. <laughs> I don't know about outsmarted. It's more like you've said something that is just so out there. I don't even know how to respond. You've left me speechless, and not for a good. Reason. <laughs> <laughs> like our, our podcast is literally losing viewers as we speak. Yeah, exactly. Well, at least sure. female ones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see now I don't have anything to say because I had, I had a comment, but I'm not saying well, Before we go yeah. down a very bad path, um, let's let's talk about just what your goals are. So if, if it seems like you have kind of found, after some trial and error, you found in general the client that you're looking to work with, right? So you want to work on the listing side. Right. You're okay working with, let's say, the, the older demographic, <laughs> which is the one that Greg <laughs> shall rapidly be entering into. Older? <laughs> it, it's it's oh. a realistic demographic out here. 20-year-olds yeah. don't own homes unless they've invented some kind of app or yeah, yeah. <laughs> played basketball That's or baseball right. or something. So it, it, you kind of have to work with, to. with people who are new, depending on your market. So Right. So you compensate that by being well-prepared. Going in there and knowing exactly what makes you different and how you're going to do something that's different and over and above what other agents are going to do. And then right. genuinely investing the extra time that you have right now into promoting your properties and getting more clients. So um, are you running, like what's your ratio right now, sellers to buyers? Uh, sellers to buyers have actually managed to flip it. And, and I, I strictened my criteria for what I actually consider to be like a buyer I'm working with. Um, so right now I have... I want to say one and a half buyers in escrow. We got a DocuSign now for signature. It should be coming back, um, and the listing agent, sorry, our offer should be getting, should be good enough for that one. So um, those were – I have two other buyers that I'm working with, so a total of four um, who are actively looking for houses. I'm showing a few this weekend. Um, so I have, I have two buyers that aren't in any contract right now, and then I'm hoping that I have four – listings in the pipe for next year most likely, probably January, February time frame. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've kind of just flipped it. I've, I've Before I used to have all these buyers, uh, you know, I'd call them every week and then one week they would just say, oh, I bought a place, thanks for all your help. You know, so I, I kind of flipped it and I chose, and it was just demoralizing. You know, nothing's more demoralizing than working with somebody for so long and then it falls through and mm -hmm. they buy with someone else and so, um, that's kind of how I'm doing now. So I, I kind of have twice as many seller leads as buyers now. 
Well, let's let's address that problem, and then we'll, we'll answer uh, a question that will probably be coming up for you shortly as you get more successful about assistants. But, um, Greg, I know you don't use one, but I know a lot of other top agents do use them, which is an exclusive buyer agency agreement. So what what is it, Greg, about your team and about the way that you approach it that kind of circumvents that problem to where you don't you don't seem to have that happen a lot to you, where buyers are working with you, and then, oh, I bought another place. Thanks for all your help. Sayonara. Uh, but you don't use a, an exclusive agency agreement. No, I don't. Um, the reason I don't is because when I first heard about this a number of years ago, I, I, I okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get it signed. So I asked the buyer into the office, just like I was told. Asked, put him in the conference room, just like I was told. Put the document in front of him, just like I was told. Explained it to him. This was his response. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Literally got up and just walked out. Didn't say a word. Got up and walked out. I'm like, well, that didn't go well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next tactic. Uh, so what I what we do uh, to circumvent that document is we just build uh, we build trust. We show value. Uh, we bring them in th into the fold immediately. I show them everything that we're going to do. I start using words like us and we versus you and me. Um, our team, us as a team, uh, I would say things like if we're going through anything, I'll be like, all right, you know, we're going to work on this as a team, you know, and, you know, we're, we're going to do that. We're going to find you a great house together. You know, we use those words. We psychologically start to bind them to us. And if we can show enough value to them, if you can say, look, well, not, but Justin, you do have a team, buddy. I mean, and I'll say, I look, do. I have, I, you know, we look, I have, I have a team that is incredibly good around me. You know, Tasso has been in the business for a long time. I report directly to Pierce, who's an internet, you know, genius, uh, who can help you as market your home online. You know, it, it, you ha you have a lending partner, you have a TC. I mean, you have all kinds of people around you. So tell them about that. Sh write in a pamphlet or something showing them who these people are, because that, you know, numbers are, are power, and that's right. what we do. We just show them pure numbers. I mean, use Tasso's numbers. Okay, you're a part of his team. Oh, I do. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then again, and you know, it was it was something that I think every new agent should work on right away is how to lock down that buyer because buyers are easier to come across than sellers. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, when I said I stricken down my criteria for when I say, oh, I'm working with a buyer, um, that pretty much means that I met them face to face. Uh, I haven't just called them on an internet lead that came in or something. I, I meet them face to face. And I have a talk with them, like, you know, how I get paid, uh, they're not paying me, what I do for them, what they can expect from me. Uh, I do try to, I do use the, you know, us and we, and we're going to do this together. And um, I just let them know, you know, this is a relationship on trust. I need to know that if anything changes with you, that you just let me know. If you feel like I'm not performing or you feel like I should be doing something else, you know, just let me know and kind of have that open communication with them um, and let them know that it's, it's, it's me and you as my buyer against the world out there. Because I think, Greg, you, you hit on it when um, I first went through your classes. There's no such thing as a win-win situation. It's either you won as the listing agent and you got a high price on favorable terms, or I won as the buyer's agent and I got the lowest price and I got favorable terms. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's no in-between on that. And so to me, there's, that's why you should work with me because... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do absolutely everything I can. Um, and I bring them the stats. You know, I'm buying homes for 98%. I don't want to bring that percentage up. So that's I have a direct correlation to really want to get you the lowest price because I want down, that, that down to 95%. And so I, I kind of have a serious conversation with them as well. I don't do the buyer broker. It has scared quite a few people off. Um, and personally, it would scare me off. I wouldn't work with somebody who made me, who didn't trust me, and, and made me sign something. Well, of course, you're a millennial. You young bloods don't like anything contract related. I don't. You, you old twenty year olds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Greg. Well, let's uh, let get to this question because, Justin, as you get more successful, you're obviously going to, you know, want to step out of some of the non-income generating activities. Let's put it that way. And someone from the, the, the Lead Gen Scripts and Objections Forum is in the same situation. So if you guys aren't already a part of that group, it's our friend Aaron Wittenstein's Facebook group. It's got about 15,000 plus members. It's facebook.com slash group slash got objections. It's a great community. Go ahead and join up with them there. But Crystal Green, Greenage, Crystal Greenage asks, uh, I'm thinking of hiring a non-licensed assistant for the administrative duties. I'm not sure what method to pay her, hourly, per transaction, or salary. Do you have any suggestions? So Greg, what say you? 
I what say I, Matt? Um, what I would do is I would uh, crystal. Really, really good question. That question is asked a ton. Um, it's really going to work out for your financial situation and where you are in your business. Uh, but my adage is you need to hire fast and fire fast because if that assistant sucks, you do not want to have locked them in on on a contract or because they were a good interviewer. We interviewed someone for this team a while back. They did a great interview and then just sucked on epic levels. So we had to get rid of this individual. Um, but I would probably say do a 60-day test drive. Um, if they perform at the levels and, and you know do things that you want or even exceed your levels, um, I would talk about maybe bringing them on on an annual contract, but pay them you know, hourly until then, and then talk about bonuses after they get a license because you're going once you have an assistant, you're going to make more business and you they're going to want to probably get a couple of deals like Eileen, who is right there and she doesn't know I'm doing that. Um, <laughs> She has um, she has two headphones on right now. She has a headset and another headset doing calls because we got you know those disasters going. But her, that woman, is worth more than she weighs. I mean, and that's a good thing. <laughs> um, but, um, no, but she Im immense value. Okay, immense value. So you have to be able to find that person that gels with you personality-wise, age, you know, everything, your your mindset. Because when you bring a person in on your team. It's the same as like starting to work with a buyer or seller. They become part of your family. They're going to hear things that are very private, both yours and your clients. You need to trust them implicitly. And when you find the right person, pay them what they're worth because they will help you grow your business and they'll and they'll they'll make you ultimately more money and that you'll make them a ton of money. So start off with baby steps and then gradually grow in once you find the right person and, and make them a, 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 an essential part of your team. Okay, and, and so the to answer the part about the pay, you would pay salary plus some type of bonus per transaction, right? I would pay pay salary plus bonus once you find the right person. Pay hourly, you know, on that test drive, you know, that sixty days, ninety days, whatever it hourly is. Hourly on the test drive. Okay. Hourly on the test drive because you want to be able to cut that tie and have a contract with them. Look, for ninety days, you you're mine. I own you. We're gonna see if this works. You know, but put a clause in there that you have the right to terminate contract if you know if they show up stinking of booze, don't show up at all, you know, come you know walking in in their underwear, you know, whatever some <laughs> lunatic things might happen. But uh, just protect yourself so you not you don't have to pay someone who is then going to hamstring you. But uh, make sure that you can fire them right away if they if they're not doing it. But then, like I keep saying, reward the person that just kicks ass and takes names. Mm. And I, I just uh, so I did another uh, hanging out earlier this morning with another client uh, down in Alabama, and she interviewed a HR expert. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're talking with her about recruiting and hiring and all this stuff. And um, one of the comments she made was really interesting. It was um, it was on the uh, on the side of like when you're interviewing somebody, there's certain things that you you can and can't ask and all this stuff. And you get past that point, and if they suck, like you just make sure that you document everything so that you can dismiss them and. Um, have everything documented. Don't ask questions that you shouldn't ask, but make sure that you check references, like Greg said, so you have someone that comes and joins and then they just suck. Like she said the same thing, although she recommends hiring slowly, by the way. Hire slow and fire fast. <laughs> right. <laughs> like an HR, like an every HR expert knows what they're talking bad. about. Yeah. Yeah. Please. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I can tell you from... Uh, uh, like from our experience, like we have here for the show, we have a part-time assistant. Uh, in the in the past, when I was at Viral, we had you know different types of assistants, both personal and like project management assistants, and then other staff that we've had to manage. And uh, you know, just in the process of like hiring and learning how to work with somebody, uh, you as an as an agent, since you're if this is the scenario we're talking about, is hiring an assistant, whether they're unlicensed or not. Uh, to come and assist you, like you really have to have your ducks in a row mentally. You mm -hmm. have to have your systems, like you have to know how do you want a home to be listed and added to the MLS. If you do not know that, bringing somebody in to do it for you will only create exponentially more work because you're trying to teach them something that you don't fully know how to, how to do yourself or you don't have the systems in place because you haven't documented anything and mm -hmm. it's all in your own head. So um, and we'll talk about this more on, on future episodes. Uh, I'm reading a book right now called Scale by Jeff Hoffman. It's amazing. I'm about halfway through it and I think I got it yesterday. Uh, it's, it's a phenomenal book. But the premise of that is that, among other things, that when you're building out and when you're hiring staff on, you have to have the systems in place before they come on. And then when they come on, they're learning systems that already exist. If you're bringing on, and so like Justin, if everything is in your head, 
and you only know kind of what you want to do, when you bring an assistant on, it's actually going to add a ton of work to your plate because you're trying to just right. teach them verbally, and you have to, they have to just basically shadow you. Well, if you go and hire an assistant that's like an, uh, an unlicensed assistant in the Philippines, for example, where you pay them 400 bucks a month to be your part-time VA, <laughs> they cannot shadow you in person. Uh, <laughs> talking about training them over Google Hangout. Like, you really have to have your ducks in a row. Um, and uh, I have a, a friend of mine that, that uh, is in real estate that hired a good friend of hers to be her assistant. Um, I would not recommend doing that. Um, yeah. Hire oh, somebody no. for the job. Hire somebody that is outside of your social circle that doesn't have anything to do with you. They're not friends. They're not family because you need someone that you can fire if they suck. I'm really glad we had this conversation after my father hired me. That's right. I exactly. would have been out of here. Well, you were not a hire. You were a reclamation project. That was that was an act. Of, from what you told me, Greg, that was not a hire. That was an act of charity. It was. <laughs> so you know, Matt, uh, before we take this baby home, uh, I knew you were gonna. I had a feeling you're gonna bring a book up. So, booyah! I got one too. Uh, duh. <laughs> Disrupt you. Uh, by Jay Samet. We are talking to him uh, on Friday. We're going to try. We're going to schedule time to get him on, guys. I haven't listened to half of it show off, um, but I have listened to like the first chapter. Maybe I'm already have things that are just brewing up in my head on how to disrupt the real estate industry in multiple ways by just looking at something different to me. Be opening to different opportunities. So awesome book, disrupt you, Jay Samet. Amazing book. Yeah. So hopefully we'll have him on in January. Yeah. Uh, so quick shout out, and then uh, we'll give everybody the McDaniel challenge again. So number one, viral marketing. Check them out. Getviral.com. All your online video and email marketing for your uh, past client database, as well as all of your leads to generate more repeat and referral business. So check them out at getviral.com. And then equity. Uh, online lead generation platform for buyers, specifically built from the ground up for solo agents. So again, that goes back to the McDaniel Challenge because the best way to get hooked up with that is to talk to Greg to see if it's available in your market. And Greg, how would one want to uh, contact you? Smoke signals, please. Okay, perfect. I respond well to those on windy days. And only military. <laughs> military, great with the flags. The... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> what it is, guys, you can call me on my cell phone, 925-915-1978. Again, 915-1978, area code 925. Uh, call me. Let's, let's do an hour of private coaching, guys. But in realistically, I go way over an hour. I'm like an hour and a half to two hours. I spent three hours on Friday night with an individual. Oh, good because Lord. Because they, you know, they, they just need this stuff, man. People need so much, so much help. Filing. Um that I'm willing to do whatever it takes to on my end that I can help you you know once once you watch our, our our podcast and you're hearing from me and Matt and our and our guests like Justin which by the way man you had great stuff today I really appreciate I knew you I knew you'd come out mm -hmm. swinging uh, <laughs> I knew, I knew you would. Um, but once, <laughs> once you get to that point and you just have that one stopping block, dude, hit me up. Let's talk. Let's chat. I mean, I was at an inspection today for an hour and a half. Holy shit. Um, and I just read the entire time about content, content marketing, marketing strategies, viral marketing. Um, so I have some Matt, you and I are going to talk after this. I got some amazing ideas I'm going to disseminate down to you. So call me, please. I don't know how many times I have to say this. So, right. you guys, this is Greg the spend the night alone. Take two time to spend the night alone. <laughs> super, um, this, <laughs> super creepy call to action. But this is a fan archy. It is run by you, for you. We love you. Please keep watching. Please tell a friend. But thank you for listening. It really makes our day. That's right. Remember to subscribe on, to the show on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher. Uh, and then if you are interested in having us come to your office and do Real Estate Uncensored live on high-tech, high-touch prospecting, or any of the other topics that we talk about on the show, uh, take the McDaniel Challenge, get a hold of Greg, get a hold of your broker or team leader, whoever approves that, hook the two of those guys up, and that way we can uh, talk about that. So with that, guys, thank you so much. Justin, Greg's right. You were awesome. You had some great, thank great you. stuff. Um, good <laughs> Shit, luck. Man, I was taking there. notes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, right. thank you very much. I'm glad to be invited on. I feel yeah. like a celebrity now. I told my you friends are. I wasn't going to be a celebrity after this day, so I think it come true. <laughs> That's right. Well, Justin, we'll probably hopefully have you on down the road here, your successes. Um, again, thank you, my friend, and thank you, everybody, for listening. We love you. Thank you for your time. That's right. See you guys you. next time.